Hello and welcome to this new video. This time we are going to unwrap the UV of the Blender Owl. This could be considered part 2 of the Blender Owl model and it's part of the things that you need to learn in your way to paint a 3D model. Before we jump into the UV unwrap, I'm going to give you a small introduction to the UV mapping. If you are not interested on in that, you could use the timestamps to jump directly to the action. Let's get started. If you are not familiar with the concept, UV Unwrap is basically mapping the 3D model into a 2D canvas for a future texture paint. There are many ways that you can map a 3D model and they serve a different purpose. Here are some of the common ones. The first one is heavily optimized UV. Heavily optimized UVs are exclusively for real-time graphics, basically video games. The main goal here is to have as much coverage on a map that is as small as possible. As I say, these are the cases of games, especially low poly games, where you have heavily limitations on your assets. In these cases, mirror UVs are very common in order to save space for other areas. The second one is technical UVs. This is most common with models that are going to be used for pre-rendered graphics, technical demos, or promo materials like movies, also video games but with pre-rendered scenes. Pixel aspect ratio is very important, but the optimization is not really counted. For this one, the UVs must be the same density as much as possible. Here is also a common practice to use multiple UVs for the different parts of the model, like UDIM tiles. However, not all pre-rendered media is going to need a UV map. A lot of artists use what is called procedural texture, but that's for another video. Last but not least, continuous UVs. This is the most common method in general. The main goal is to reduce the number of seams and preserve the density across the UVs. Basically, not a lot of separate UVs and just some heavy optimizations. After this brief theory, there is one last thing that you need to remember when doing UV mapping. If you don't have a lot of time, you have to learn how to hide imperfections, and only the experience will teach you that. Okay, after this introduction, let's start with the UV unwrap. By default, Blender has a UV layout that you can access right here. But I think that it's a better idea to learn from the main layout how to make and access the UV editing. If you did not make this model from the previous video, you could download the model from the link below. I'm going to start by turning off every object but the main body. Now let's go to view, area and select one of the splits there. In that new area, go to editor type and switch to UV editor. Once you do that, you will have an empty canvas. Here you will see the 2D representation of the model. To start working here, we need to go to edit mode, so let's press tab. Once in edit mode, you will see the vertices, edges and faces in the UV editing. But if you click on a blank area, everything disappears. That's because by default, you can only see the selected areas. To change this, we need to go to the UV sync icon and turn it on. Now, let's start selecting the vertices here. Put the mouse on top of the vertices and press L. With the cube selected, press Shift H to solo the cube. Go back to the UV editing area and click on New. Add a name for this, then go to Generate Type and switch that to Color Grid. After this, choose a size and hit OK. Now, we have the UV grid that we are going to use. This UV grid will help you to identify stretching and imperfections during the UV unwrap. For that, let's go to Editor Type and switch to Shader Editor. Inside the Shader Editor, press New to add a new material and change the name. We need to add more nodes here. With the mouse on the shader area, press Shift A and then S and type Image to add an image texture node. Connect the color to the color base like this. Press Shift A S again and type Mapping. Add that and connect this new node to the vector of the image node. 
Shift 8S one more time and add a texture coordinate node and connect the UV node to the vector node. Let's go closer to see the image texture node. Click on the drop down menu and select the color grid that we made. After that, go to the 3D view, move the mouse to the menu bar up here, then click and hold the mirror mouse button. Move the mouse to the left until you see the viewport icon. Click on the one called viewport shading. And now we can see the UV grid and all the imperfections. Go back to the editor type and switch back to UV editing. Switch from vertex selection to edge selection to start fixing this. The main goal here is to fix the stretching and distortion that we have now. In order to achieve that, we need to map the whole model correctly and other things that we will see in a moment. What we need to do now is basically open this 3D model and go from 3D to 2D. It's like making an object from a piece of paper. With that, I'm going to mark some edges using a process called Mark Seams. In this case, because I'm using the mirror modifier, I only need to do this for one side of the cube. Select this edge, hold down Shift, and also select the following edges, like in the video. Once you select those, right click and select Mark Seam. Now, we have this red selection on the edges, which are cuts of the model. Then, press A to select all, and after that, press U to open the UV mapping menu. Once you open the menu, you will see some projections for the UVs. They serve different purposes and can be really useful. But for this video, I'm going to focus on the basic UV unwrap using Sims. So let's select unwrap. After you do that, you will see a small menu and the unwrapped UV on the UV editing area. Inside, there are two methods, angle base and conformer. Angle base is most used for organic objects like trees, humans, and animals. And conformer is most of the time used with basic geometries like cubes, spheres, and so. But you could try both to see which one suits better for you. In this case, I'm going to use conformal. As you can see, unwrapping a UV is not always enough to have a great UV mapping. Most of the time, you will need to tweak some areas to get what you need. One thing that you could do is to add support edges, like in this case. I'm going to add some support edges. Press Ctrl R and move the mouse close to the 3D model to add a cut. But instead of clicking the area, scroll the mouse wheel once to add two cuts at the same time. Then click and press enter. With those edges selected, I'm going to move them in wide axis in my case. Make sure you have the same orientation. To move the edges, press S, Y and move the mouse, but a bit until you reach the edges of the object, just enough to move the texture a bit. Let's add another cut on x-axis with Ctrl R. Then press A to select everything, U and select unwrap again. As you can see, the side with the edges looks better now. But we need to keep fixing the areas with the distortions. Like the first two, press Ctrl R, scroll the mouse wheel a bit, click and enter. Then Move the edges, but this time in seed axis. So use S, seed, and move. Once you finish that, press A, U, and unwrap. Now, these objects do have perfect squares without distortions. That's one. Let's bring back the other parts with Alt H. Now, I'm going to select the wing edge with the mouse on top. Press L, then Shift H to solo the wing. In this case, I'm going to select the middle edges with Alt click. Then right click and select Mark Sim. Press A to select all and U to unwrap. Let's check what we have. 
We could also change the method to C. For me, angle base looks ok. Unhide everything with Alt H to do another part of the model. The next part will be the legs. So select an edge, press L and then Shift H to solo the area. I'm going to show you another way to reduce the distortions. First, we need to select the edges in the middle to mark the seams. Select this one with Alt click, right click, mark seam. Press A to select everything, U and unwrap. We still have this area creating a mirror inside. Now let's move to the UV editing area and select the fourth face in the middle like in the video. Switch to vertex selection. Select the first vertex of that face and press N. Go to UV vertex and copy the Y coordinates. Now select the second vertex and paste the copied coordinates to that vertex. As you can see, the vertices are now lined up. With that second vertex selected, copy the X coordinates. Select the vertex below and paste the X coordinates that you copied. Select the first vertex and also copy the X coordinate. Then select the vertex below and paste the X coordinate. With that last vertex selected, copy the Y coordinate and paste that to the vertex on the right. Now switch to face selection by pressing 3 or go to this area to select the faces. Once you do that, select that face that we were editing. Press A to select all and the one that we have selected first must be highlighted. After that, press U to open the Unwrap menu and select Follow Active Quads. And now everything should look straight. But instead of squares, this looks like rectangles, so we need to fix that. Switch to Edge Selection and then go to this area and box select these edges. Now press G, X to move these edges to the left until we fix the problem. Do the same to the other side, box select the edges and press G, X to move. As you can see, also the center part looks wrong. To fix this, we need to select the edges close to the border and shift select the edges close to the center and do the G, X to move them. Also, we need to do the same process on the other side. Select the edges, G, X to move. And this part is also done. Press Alt H to unhide the model. Let's do the next part. Like in the other areas, remember to select the edge or vertex, then press L and finally Shift H to solo the area. On this part, I'm going to select the edges, also the same edges on the other side with shift selection. The back edges too, the bottom edges, the bottom edges will be this side, this entire side and this side too. Only this bottom area won't be selected. Now right click mark seam. Press A to select all, press U and select unwrap. Ok, I think for me angle base is a good one, but I don't like this area right here. What I'm going to do is mark these edges and these edges, right click mark seam, A again, U and unwrap. And let's see what we have. I like this new one. I'm gonna leave that like that. And let's unhide the rest of the model to continue. Now I'm going to do one of the claws and then try to do the same yourself for the other two. 
The first thing that I'm going to do is to switch to face selection and then delete the faces in the back of the area. These are not useful because they are not going to be visible. Switch to edge selection and select the following edges. This one, these two, these two, and this. After that, right click, mark scene, press A to select all, U, and unwrap. Because I have a small distortion here, I'm going to add a support edge with Ctrl R and then move it like we previously learned. Then I'm going to press A, U, and unwrap again. Looks okay. You could make any changes if you want to, but it's okay for me now. Now try yourself with the other two. Alright, now press Alt H to unhide the model. Let's now do the face, the main old face. Because I wanted to have the whole face as one UV, I'm going to apply the mirror modifier. Before you do that, make sure to have a copy of your progress so you can come back in case of something goes wrong. Once you have that, press Tab to go to Object Mode, go to the modifier, click on the drop down menu, and select Apply. Tap to go back to edit mode, switch to edge selection, select an edge of the face, then press L to select that area and shift H to solo the face. Because I'm not going to need this, I'm going to delete the inside faces of the eyes. Switch to face selection and delete those faces with X. Another part that is unnecessary is the inside of the nose and also the beak, so delete those two. After this, select one of the faces and press L to select the whole area but the beak. Once we have everything selected, press U and unwrap the area without any seams and see what we have. Ok, I like it this way. Now let's unwrap the beak, but try to do it yourself in the same way as the claws. So let's select the seams, mark the seams, select everything with A, press U, unwrap and add the support edge and repeat the unwrap. As you can see after you do that, the big UVs are too big. So you have to select the big and make it smaller using S inside the UV canvas. Use the old face as a reference for the size. Once you're happy with that, press G on the UV canvas and move the beak. Press Alt H to unhide the model to continue. You will be probably thinking that this is looking like a big mess, but don't worry, this is the easy part. Press A to select the whole model. Go to the UV Editor, UV Menu and select Pack Islands. After that, open the small menu below and move the margin a bit, not much. There are parts that I want and you will probably going to need to make bigger because you are going to paint this all. For example, the face of the model, I need the UVs a bit bigger and also the body. So I'm going to box select only the main body UVs like this, make it bigger by pressing S, move it with G just a bit, and do the same with the main face of the O. Even the beak could be a bit bigger, not that much. After that, press A to select or go to UV menu again and pack islands again. And now this looks better. Make any adjustments if you need to finish this area. Just be careful to keep all the UVs inside the UV canvas. And we now have the body completely unwrapped. Let's move to the eyes. The eyes in this case are going to be easy because we use a primitive geometry. In this case the UV sphere. Select the eyes. Switch the editor type to shader and add the UV material that we made. 
As you can see, the UV sphere is really good. But I'm going to cut half of the sphere because I'm not going to need the back area. Switch back the editor type to UV editor, then press tab to go to edit mode. Press 3 for face selection and box select the bottom area inside the UV canvas like this. And then delete those areas. After that, press A to select the eye and U to unwrap without any seams. You could make it smaller if you want to. And just like that, the eyes are done. Let's unhide the tails to start the last part. The tails are the same, but with the different size. I'm going to make one and then try yourself to do the others. That shouldn't be that hard because you already know how to do the UV. Alright, here's another way to add the UV material to the tail without leaving the UV editor. Select the tail, go to the side panels, move down to the red circle and click. This is the area to manage the materials without entering the node editor. Click the icon on the left of the new and select the material. Do the same with the other part of the tail. I'm gonna leave the center piece visible and hide the other part with the eye icon to start. Tap to go to edit mode. Switch to face selection and select the faces on the bottom part. Delete those faces because you're not gonna need it. Select the edges like this using shift and alt. Then right click Mark Sim. Press U and unwrap. As you can see, it does not look good. For this part, I'm going to press Tab to go back to Object Mode. Once here, I'm going to the Modifier, Mirror Modifier, and apply the Mirror Modifier using the drop down menu. Tap again to go back to Edit Mode. Select everything with A and press U and select Unwrap. Now we just need to rotate the UV just a bit with R. I just want to align the texture and the 3D model. Now try to finish the last part of the model. Go back to any part if you need to. You already know how to do it. You just need to practice a lot. Okay. I hope you liked this video, please subscribe to the channel so I can make videos more often. Like it, dislike it, share and I will see you next time. Bye.